Hello everybody, my name is Stefan Landorfer from Security Software Engineering from Austria. I'd like you to welcome you to my presentation User Experience with Embedded Linux on Cabin Displays. Yeah, um, on the left hand side here um, on the screen you can see a typical scenario why, uh, where we implemented software for a cabin. Uh, you can see an instrument cluster and a center display with uh, screens, touch screens um, that run embedded Linux and they're using a lot of C++ and Qt to run the displays and this is somehow kind of the background where we come from where I also will tell you my experience how to um, do such systems on what kind of impacts they have on overall system design. Good, um, so before I continue with my presentation I'd like to introduce on one slide the company's equality uh, that you know what kind of background we come from. So Sequality is a service consulting company. We mainly do project projects around embedded Linux, C++ and Qt. So almost all of them, uh, of them touch displays and HMIs play a very important role. But of course not only the user interface is important, it's also important to run this system on dedicated embedded hardware and to do the overall software design and integration of all the data on this platform so that you can visualize something. So embedded Linux and real-time aspects are very important. That we closely work together with Canvas and also um, hardware manufacturers in order to get this done. Yeah, in, in terms of areas where this is um, uh, applied, uh, automotive and off-highway uh, has been really an important sector in the last five years. But traditionally, we, we also come from industrial applications and medical devices where similar software stacks also are used to um, produce products to get uh, them into serious production and have, um, yeah, have a nice user interface for the customers. Good. So some example clients of us uh, already um, told this Rosenbauer, they produce fire trucks and have a very innovative cabin design here. Or um, German company Europa, they have harvesting machines and also make use of embedded Linux displays inside their cabins. Good, so now to the agenda of my um, talk. First I will go um, into the trends, the current trends of this area and then I will yeah, try to um, result the impacts of these trends uh, on embedded system development and yeah, then what is the role of open source Linux and Qt in all this um, environment. Um, yeah, can you make or should you buy uh, these kinds of system systems, and at the end, some lessons learned out of our experience in the last from the last years. Good. So um, the trends in this area. So what we see is that an, um, that connectivity really is a very um, important um, aspect of such a system. You have all kinds of interfaces on connections to other systems and to protocol protocols. So you need to make sure to get TCP IP done, HTTP, web access, Canvas of course for your internal uh, vehicle, Wi-Fi access, maybe even have Wi-Fi hotspots available for inside the cabin, cabin Bluetooth to a mobile phone or also for an app connection for, for a remote controller, uh, USB for USB sticks, data input export if, you, if your vehicle is shared among several um, different users, GSM, um, so connectivity is very important and also additional software services that might be included like Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. 
um, or you even want to do software over the air updates so these all plays into connectivity and uh, it's, um, that's quite an important um, um, aspect to consider and as you all want to show these uh, connections on one display you need to integrate them somehow on one platform so cameras, navigation, smartphone and phone and the information from the drive train they need to be integrated on one platform so that you have access from a single platform and can display this on one display or um, yeah several different displays yeah user experience is a USP in automotive products nowadays so in many situations not a um, not the mechanical differences between a product's uh, artist, the other decisive factor whether a customer buys something it's the software experience when it when he comes into the cabin or in, inside the vehicle that decides if uh, it's um, the better um, solution for him so you want to strive to come to iPhone-like user interfaces, have smooth graphics, have personalized interactions with the um, user of the vehicle. Yeah, then assistance in autonomous driving is also trends and electrification as um, yeah, all of you might know. Good. Um, so what kind of impacts do those trends have? So as there's a lot of connectivity and yeah, you need to aggregate all this data from all sources on one display and integrate them on one platform. Um, so when you integrate you want to make sure that you integrate somehow in an open standardized technology so that you don't experience a vendor lock-in uh, or you that you are too dependent on one single on one single um, um, supplier on one single technology um, as integration also is quite hard to do and is quite an investment into your future architecture and yeah of course you integrate um, all these data sources and flexibility and configuration is also an important aspect here as you want to use the same platform for the whole product line probably and last but not least long-term considerations here play a role so you meant to make sure you integrate on the platform that lives the next 5, 10 or 15 years at least and uh, is uh, available for a bright community. Yeah, though, so in order to be able to integrate, you will need software plugins where you formerly probably had hardware interfaces. For example, navigation system probably nowadays is more a part of a bigger software system and is not a dedicated hardware solution as it probably was 10, 15 years ago same with camera streams and um, bird views and uh, so on um, you need to make sure that they have a software plugin that's available for your integration platform yeah and of course standardized communication protocols are important they, that they, they are open and extensible next impact um, if you do integration connectivity and you also try, strive to get the best user experience features this results in really high complexity in, in, yeah, in this software process and uh, so the question is how do you manage all this complexity and especially if you uh, pair this with um, safety requirements uh, you might uh, you might want to consider that you divide your system into parts that are more safety critical and that you have a system that provides convenience features and this is something that we saw in the last years over and over again also in our projects that our customers say okay 
uh, everything that has to do with really cool user interfaces and with um, yeah um, nice images and pictures uh, we use powerful frameworks for these that are probably very hard to get certified for safety critical things but uh, as long as we just have convenience features in these kinds of systems we are good to go because this, for the safety critical staff there's still um, a simpler technology probably that can be certified with relatively um, low effort and uh, there's still uh, a hardware switch to turn it off to be um, safe. So one example here is, for instance, um, yeah, the audiovisual cockpit here. You see the instrument cluster warning lights here on the top. So they are not part of um, the software solution. They are still just traditional images, and yeah. Um, Yeah, and um, the next thing, especially for the smaller companies that try to integrate a um, yeah, uh, platform for off-highway vehicles, they want to use technology that, that is available for a big community. So, um, um, yeah, that is tested by a big community and also uh, where they have the possibility to gather their own people somehow that probably have uh, also exp already experienced so and if you're using standard technology based on embedded Linux and C++ then it's um, yeah it's um, the chances are high that you also find um, people in this area that pick this up quickly good um, yeah next impact um, the S so all this assistance and autonomous driving it's calling for really powerful software and hardware so you want to make sure that you have headroom available um, when you're using uh, these kinds of technology for example here on the right hand side you see a, a digital video camera that um, provide the, provides uh, its camera stream via ethernet cable um, and uh, is then shown on the displays on the right here and yeah in order to get this done you need powerful embedded uh, hardware that um, supports hardware acceleration and um, yeah has um, has support for low latency video playback yeah and it's important impact here as well so what is the role of open source linux and qt here so yeah embedded linux nowadays is the de facto standard in embedded system design and operate for operating systems it's open source the community is very bright and uh, it's, it's driven by this um, community and um, yeah this um, is very important if you are looking for an integration platform and now it is yeah a lot of operators operating systems are derived from embedded Linux and uh, it's getting more and more importance also in the in the automotive area there's also automotive grade embedded Linux so quite an important technology I would say nowadays and if you're um, looking at Linux and you're looking for a graphics framework uh, then yeah it's very chances are high that you have a look at Qt so it's the most powerful platform library on Linux it has a very strong user interface components but not only user interface I would say the whole ecosystem is quite strong um, and here you have the chance for open source licenses and also commercial licenses um, and yeah can use this on embedded Linux on a wire on a really wide range of platforms. Then of course there is the discussion whether to use microcontrollers or embedded Linux based systems. So yeah, of course dedicated hardware is always used for real time and safety critical things, but embedded Linux really can be used for this heavy user experience. Uh, stuff and for integration and communication with other systems. 
could uh, make or buy um, user, user experience uh, is very hard to buy. So we see the trend that companies integrate uh, their software by their own and they found their own teams to do this. And yeah, managing complexity, um, sometimes it's wise to stick with the standard working products and um, uh, buy the, uh, w when you buy complex components, um, if you don't have the budget like um, the big automotive vendors to uh, invent everything for their, themselves. But yeah, the, that's a business decision as well here. <laughs> Good, some lessons learned at the end. So management of creating automotive platform needs to know how of software development management. So if you build up your team, uh, you should build it up in a way that it can do software support and maintenance. But I think it's also a very good idea here in this area to build up partners that support with embedded software development as this is a very specialized area uh, where it's good to have Spe uh, special uh, special people that can help you out. Yeah, building up prototype technologies, of course, before you go into serious production and somehow shifting your mind or from just buying uh, pro um, completed products from suppliers uh, to establishing an open collaborative platform where you also share informa information with, with your partners. So this is sometimes um, new here in this area as well. Good. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, if there are questions, I'm happy for you to answer them. And yeah, if you have any questions here, my contacts, um, I will answer them shortly. Good. Thank you very much.